here's a guy, and as well as uh, Cole Perfetti, that's going to be like top two, top two, top three in the NHL draft. And uh, these guys are both talented. And uh, to see Quentin Byfield night in and night out, I mean, the guy's got so much skill. He could pass the puck. He could score anytime he wants. And, uh, like, he's going to be so good for any NHL team that wants him. And as well as Cole Perfetti. Sure. Right? Cole Perfetti's going to be the guy. And, uh, I mean, top three for me is going to be Lafreniere, Byfield, somebody else. Might be Perfetti. Welcome to episode 11 of The Media's Input. I am your host, James A. Paxson. To check out this interview and previous interviews, go to the YouTube channel, James Paxson. Last episode, episode 10, I interviewed Aaron Sanders from the Windsor Express. Today, we have someone who's probably one of the most fun guys to ever be around in broadcasting. He's a hilarious fellow. He's the Sudbury Wolves play-by-play broadcaster on the road. Huge hockey fan, Mr. Mike Carafalitis. Mike, how are we doing, sir? All oh, doing fantastic. Just need a shave, number one, and I need a haircut, and that's coming uh, next week because we just got into stage two over here in Ontario, so uh, in my area. So yeah, I have to wait, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm doing great. You don't trust the uh, wife to get the haircut? No, never, <laughs> never, never. She will. She will never give me a haircut. She she wanted to. She said, "Let me trim the sides and stuff." I said, "Nope." And no, I said, no way. I just keep, I just walk away. I used to say no, but now she's just like, she keeps going. I just walk away, right? And then I got my sister that wants to do it. And she says, well, I could do it. She brings out the clippers. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. Well, I did it because she's got, she's got three young uh, kids, right? Two boys, twin boys. And uh, we had a get together at her place and she wanted to do it. I said, no, nope. I said, the only person that's touching it is my barber when he's ready to do it. And that's next week. <laughs> Yeah, so, for, uh, uh, you me, better be ready. For me, it turned into coronavirus, not getting a haircut, and then I turned out to like it. So I'm just gonna you keep look, growing. You look it. like a surfer. I, no, I think your that's hair. A, I think, yeah, you look like a surfer. Seriously, like your hair is growing up perfectly. Right, mm-hmm. you got the nice long hair. If I was to let my hair grow, it wouldn't look like that. It's like that's a compliment. So you'd be yeah, guaranteed. I could see you surfing and and the hair going all over the place. Hey, eh? yeah. <laughs> I love it. We're stuck here in Michigan and Windsor, nowhere near the yeah. ocean. Being a surfer yeah. is better than this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Exactly. Nice blue water, I wish. <laughs> like out west, it's nice out there. I'll tell you that. We're on vacation right now, but it's not, uh, not a good idea to do that stuff, okay. right? So. Not right now. Yeah. No, no, it will. It will. Yeah. How do you think uh, Canada's handling the coronavirus? Uh, I think we're doing a good job, actually. Uh, you know, today they, I actually just saw that, uh, you know, our premier of Ontario, his name is Doug Ford. Uh, our case, the cases in Ontario are going lower and lower. Uh, today we only had 111. So that's pretty, pretty good on a province. I think we're like 14 and, and close to 15 million people, right? You know, province would be a state, of course, and same kind of thing. But uh, no, they're doing a good job with it. Uh, they just uh, went into stage two where they open up the restaurants. Uh, uh, sorry, the patios and the restaurants and the malls and the, and the hair uh, salons, hairdressers, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, no, he's doing a great job with it. So uh, slow and steady, right? We don't, we don't want to see what, what happened with uh, what's going on right now in Texas and Florida and unfortunate. I'm sure they'll be okay, but uh, right now they're going through a spike, so you just got to avoid the spike, and I think our premier's doing a good job with it. Yeah, definitely. What have you been doing since the virus happened in March? <laughs> not much. <laughs> Honestly, not much at all. You know what? Playing with my son, of course. You know what? This is like really good family time right now uh, with the wife uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, no, uh, watching a lot of TV, watching a lot of news. I've been like, my eyes have been glued on the news. That's for sure. What's going on every day with this pandemic. Um, I have been keeping active and been walking a lot. Um, I've probably been walking about nine K a day, uh, which is good. Right. So I have to lose that weight. So right now I'm doing pretty good with that. And, uh, yeah, no, just trying to keep active and, you know, with my son as well, keeping after with him, chasing him around now. My goodness, so right, so he's he's going to be uh, turning two soon. So 
chasing him as a workout. And uh, yeah, so it's been good. It's been good. Looking good. Not really good, but not as good as I like, but it's been good. You know, I've been do- doing well with it. Yeah. You're going to look all buff and big in your OHL season, all muscular. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know about buff and big. I'll tell you skinnier. I'll tell you skinnier for sure. Hey. I'll be skinnier. But buff and big, I never really was a buff and big guy, eh? I don't know why. I, 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 I don't know. I was never into, the, like, getting huge, you know? I always lost the weight. I'm kind of like a guy, like I'm fat, then I'm skinny, then I'm fat, then I'm skinny. You know what I mean? So I, I, it depends on, I don't know, it depends on the mood, I guess I'm in. It's weird. In the winter, I'm, I get fatter. In the summer, I get skinnier. So that's just the way it goes, I guess. Yeah. For the past couple of years, you've been the Sudbury Wolves play-by-play broadcaster for road games. How did yeah. you get there? How did your career in broadcasting start? And walk me through how you're at the point you are now. Sure. Um, you know what? I just started volunteering, actually. Um, I volunteered in uh, Kitchener, Ontario, and I volunteered in Guelph, Ontario as well. Um, I did um, – uh, I filled in a couple times for the Kitchener Rangers, uh, their TV broadcast. I, um, I filled in doing uh, hosting. I filled in first doing hosting, right? And then um, I, I have to give – yeah, so then – I did hosting, and then I did some color, the games as color as well. Um, I never did play-by-play, though, for the Rangers, right? Actually, yes, I did. I did play-by-play for the Rangers uh, in, a, in a tournament. I think Saginaw was in that tournament. Um, it was uh, the summer showcase thing. They do it in Kitchener, something like that. Um, yeah, so I did play-by-play for that, uh, for TV, the TV station in Rogers uh, years ago. Um, yeah, and uh, from there, I just did fill-ins with Guelph as well, the Guelph Storm. Um, but I was just doing the hosting with the Guelph Storm. Um, so I went from there, and I've done, like, as well, some uh, football. I've done some baseball. I've done some, uh, ba- I've done some basketball as well. Uh, so I've, I've, I'm pretty much a jack of all trades, I guess you could say. Um, it's fun. It's a lot of fun but it's something that I think that I'm I'm made to do, let's just say, right? Um, I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, and my mom still has the tapes that I used to tape myself. uh, You're uh, doing play-by-play for a a hockey game or football game or something like that, right? And my mom still has the tapes. When you had the old recorder, when you used to be able to not, now you know you could do it with the phone. But, um, yeah, I used to do that a lot and uh, always, always been interested in doing it. And uh, after that, uh, yeah, then I got my opportunity with the Wolves. Uh, and then I went to, yeah, so then been doing it. Last year I worked with uh, uh, Brandon, Brandon Scott. Um, now he's the audio uh, video. He's the, kind of like the media producer, kind of takes care of us, um, as well as, you know, um, uh, Brian Cooper up there as well. Uh, he does the home games, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, I don't think I've ever worked with a team like this. And I and I believe in broadcasting that team is number one, right? Because you're always going to go ideas off each other, and you know, with the interviews, you know, you talk to Brandon about it, and Brandon will send you interviews. What do you think about this? You know, what do you think about that? And, you know, and, and Brian the same way, you know what I mean? Like always trying to make the broadcast better. I, I, I don't think I've ever been too confident to, to say, because if you get too confident, then I think that you're going to go kind of like, for me, I'm learning every day. I guess that's what I'm trying to say, right? Always learning, always listening to my old broadcasts. I'm always listening to other OHL broadcasts as well. Um, uh, say, you know, I listen to Saginaw broadcasts. I listen to the Flint broadcast. I listen to uh, the Kitchener broadcast everywhere, everywhere in the league, right? For the radio guys. And I, and I pick up certain things, right? And, and I pick up certain things too, like, you know, that I can work on and uh, that I can get better at, right? You know, in the beginning, I used to act like, you know, every goal was game seven, you know, in the playoffs, kind of like, Score! right? You know, like uh, then – you got to kind of take it easy, and I realized that. And, uh, and that's worth learning through producers as well with other people, right? And I give a lot of uh, credit 
uh, to where I am to a couple people, right. Um, uh, that are making me, that made me better. Like my first producer in Kitchener, his name is Steve Gibson. And uh, he did the uh, Kitchener Rangers broadcast. And now he does the, he works for MLSE now. But anyway, besides that, he was a guy that really kind of took me aside and said, you know what, this is, you know, do try this, try this, you know, don't act like it's game seven every time, you know, that kind of thing. And it's people that help you. Like, and, you know, another guy, Steve Fitzsimmons, a guy that uh, does the Guelph uh, store broadcast for the, uh, uh, um, for Rogers TV in Guelph, right? Like there's another guy. And, you know, Dominic Canning. Dominic Canning's a good guy too. And there's another guy, you know, I can, you know, talk to and say, hey, Dom, like, what do you think? And, you know, and, and, he, and these guys are all good guys. The OHL community is pretty good. And I think everybody kind of helps each other, like, which is a good thing, you know, like a talk about team. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, where I am now. And it's an uh, unbelievable experience, that's for sure. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun going to the away arenas. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, and uh, a lot of the credit, like I couldn't ask for a better team to work with, like I said, in Sudbury, like from top to bottom in the management. Uh, CEO to uh, marketing manager to everybody. Everybody works together. Right. And uh, full credit and a great team and great people. And from coaching staff as well to players, uh, can't go wrong. I'm real. What's one thing you think you could work on to be better at that you really push yourself to be better at in your future broadcast? No, oh, that's a good, oh, that's a great question. Every, uh, lots of things, uh, you know, like uh, maybe, maybe working on my, I guess my, I'm always trying to get that perfect goal call, right? I know it's kind of like, you know, cliche, I guess, as they call it, you know, or, you know whatever. Um, but yeah, no, always trying to work on my goal call and, and trying to get it to be perfect. Like I, you listen to other goal calls around the league, right. And, and around the NHL and the OHL, of course. And, um, I don't know. I always work on that. And I still do the mute thing to this day. Right. You know, try to work on my voice and, and my delivery. Right. So, uh, I think my delivery has gotten a lot better, of course. Um, uh, and, uh, just gotta keep working on it, whatever you're doing. Like, you know, you could be the um, best broadcaster in the world. You could be Mike Emmerich. It could be Joe Bowen, Jim Houston, whatever. Right. But you know, I'm sure these guys are probably tell you the same thing. You know, they're always working every day and they're always trying to make themselves better. So I think that's the same thing. Me. Talk about like the best moment in this career so far, the moment where you're like, I'm really happy I became a broadcaster. <laughs> wow. Probably when I got, because when you're a fill in and you're kind of thinking to yourself, is this going to work? You know, what am I doing? is it's going to work and then I just kept grinding you know you just kept grinding kept grinding kept grinding and I think the best one part was two years ago when I got the call from the wolves to say all right are you ready kind of thing and I said yeah and did that first game in Guelph and then you just felt like like a million bucks you know, you felt like a million bucks. You felt like you, you came out of a car wash. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. And then after that first game in Guelph, you knew that, you know, and then working with Brandon, Brandon was doing color and it was just, that was, that was the time. It's just like, you know, here we go kind of thing. Right. So let's, uh, keep this going and stuff and, and do well with this. And, uh, couldn't, like I said, yeah, that, that probably be it right there. Who are some of your uh, broadcasting broadcasting inspirations? Who are some of your favorite guys to listen to? Favorite guys? Wow. Uh, probably, obviously, Bob Cole back in the day. Um, he was my favorite hockey night in Canada, of course. Um, I'd like to listen to, of course, um, oh, man, Joe Bowen, of course, for the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, he's a big inspiration. I love listening to him. I've listened to him since I was a kid as well. And another guy I'm going to mention – well, it's a couple guys. I like Pat Foley on uh, Chicago Blackhawks broadcast. That guy is just unbelievable, right? Uh, that's another one. And I, I forgot the other guy I was going to say that was I really – oh, yeah, Rick Jenneret in Buffalo. He's a mayday. Mayday! Right? I can't do it. But uh, Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> I've heard it. Okay, right? 
whatever, whatever. Yeah, look it up. Google it. But uh, he's the guy. You know what? Those four guys, uh, unbelievable. And, um, yeah, those, those guys were good. Those are probably it. You've seen some great players by being the play-by-play broadcaster for the Sudbury Wolves. Talk about Quinton Byfield. He could oh. really make an impact in the NHL. Talk about what you think his ceiling is, what type of player you think he'll be in the NHL, and what we can see out of him in the next five years. Sure. Uh, man, he is a man. I don't know how to explain. He's just a man in a child's body. I'm trying to, I guess that's how you say it. Um, he's, a, he's a pro, that's for sure. He's very intense. He's very good on the puck. He's very big. He's very strong. Uh, he knows he's fast. He's quick. Man, this is just, he's just like the total package uh, to me. And any covering him for the last two years. And you know what? He's, like I said, he's a pro and he's, he's a nice guy to approach, right? Anytime I wanted an interview or anything like that, no problem, right? Um, and, uh, but playing-wise... And he skates like the wind for his size. And he's probably going to be, I would say, with any chill drive, he's got to be top two for sure. At least top two in my mind. So whatever team gets this guy is getting a pro, a guy that can do it all. So and these players don't come too often, right? And this uh, NHL draft that's coming up, there's a lot of OHL players that are uh, in this uh, NHL draft. They're going to, I think they're going to go high as, uh, you know, we could talk about Cole Perfetti. There's one. We could talk about Jamie Drysdale, another one. Marco Rossi that are going to go high, uh, just to name a few. Uh, but uh, these, yeah, but Byfield, man, whatever team gets him, it's going to be instant impact. Well, maybe instant impact. I think he's he might be ready. So he's only 17. So, um, man, he's 17, but he's huge. I mean, I, he, I go beside him, and he intimidates me in a good way. Right, <laughs> you know. So today, he's better known as Q, and he's he's such a good guy. So, um, yeah, he's top two, and he's just gonna when he gets to the NHL, he's gonna rip it up for sure. Can you think of a perfect NHL team for him to fall into right now that will make his skills and talents just flourish? Yeah. Uh, well, if the Red, I could see it maybe the Red Wings. It's a possibility if the Red Wings get up there for a high pick. Um, any team, Ottawa Senators, any team he goes to, the Ottawa Senators, um, uh, the Kings, who knows? Whoever, whoever drafts, drafts uh, Quinton Byfield is going to get the total package. So uh, fans of whatever city gets him should be very excited and uh, look forward to the draft, actually. And I still don't get it how it goes with the phase one and phase two and phase three and Man, oh man! I turned. I had to turn it off. I didn't understand anything that I was saying. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just gonna find out, right? I'm gonna turn it on when this happens, and that's it. I assume each team will get a player. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Right. I'm sure you. I'm sure you and me and everybody else was a little bit, you know, kind of okay. How does it work with the round two, round one, and the, the phases and all this kind of stuff? I had no idea what he was talking about. So my brain was going all over the place. But uh, like I said, you know what? I'm sure you, me, and everybody else, when we turn it on, that's when we're going to find it. So, yeah. It would be very heartbreaking for me being a Detroit Red Wings fan and having oh, okay. a terrible, awful season we had to not get the first pick, to do all yeah, we had and not get the first pick. No, I, but I, would hope, I would hope you guys do, but you never know. <laughs> With the balls, right? The draft lottery balls. The way they go, you guys could be like fifth. You don't even know. <laughs> it, it could happen. That's what's so crazy. Who knows? Uh-huh. It, uh, who knows? I know. So, uh, but uh, you know, they do have a lot of balls in there in the uh, thing there, and they take out of the machine. And I'm sure Detroit has a great chance to get that number one pick. And if Detroit gets Quinton Byfield, you guys are, are, are your team is getting everything, and this guy is gonna really, really rip it up for. Any team that gets him, I say it again. Well, Alexi's yeah. probably number one, but you're assuming that Quentin will be number two? I don't know. I there's I think he could be number one. He could sure he sure can be a number one. Absolutely. Yeah. He could be a number one. Um the way he plays, uh 
the Frenier has got a year on him. Don't forget, right? Yeah. And right, and uh, you know, a lot of people were saying uh, this year. Well, you know, Quinton Byfield didn't really have a good World Juniors. Well, Quinton Byfield didn't really play that much in the World Juniors at 17. So my point being, uh, Lafreniere didn't play that much either when he was uh, 17 in the World Juniors for Team Canada. And then, you know, this year, of course, he had uh, a great tournament for Canada, uh, winning the gold medal or whatever. Uh, but, um, man, that's, it's tough. It's tough to go one, two. They're both great players. They're both dynamic Um but by Phil, he could go number one. It depends what the team's needs are, right? Depends what the scouts say. It depends, you know, hey, like, you know, we think Byfield's our guy. Like, you never know. There could be surprises, and Byfield could go number one, but it's possible. Yeah. Are but you, they'll go one, two. They'll go one, two. Are you one person who thinks team needs is way more first important than the most talented player available? It depends. It depends. I'm, 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 I'm kind of like that more i guess in football you know what i mean i think that's a little bit different than hockey i think hockey you have to take the best talent that's available you have to take the best talent that's available at least in the first round and in the second round right depends how many picks you have too um it depends if you need defense right you can kind of draft with that and develop and whatnot but uh if you need offense too so it depends. It depends. Uh, with hockey, I think it's a little different. You can definitely, um, you can definitely pick the best players. I think. I think that's uh, the best thing to do. If I'm a GM, that's what I would do. So, it depends on how good your team is, though, right? I mean, if you're the number one or number two in the draft, uh, uh, Detroit Red Wings, Ottawa Senators, you're going to go for the best player available, right? Mm-hmm. So, not, so, the, so that's that's what I think. Yeah. Looking forward to next year. What are you excited about for the Sudbury Wolves team? Oh, I'm always excited for the Sudbury Wolves team. Hey, yeah, they uh, got a good defense coming back. That's for sure. Uh, their defensive core is coming back. Uh, Jack Thompson, Isaac Phillips to be uh, two guys that probably will get drafted in the NHL draft actually this year. Uh, these guys, I mean, the defense, I mean, coming back is uh, – Nathan Rebo, another guy. Um, the defense is sure to be very, very good offensively. You know, don't know if Byfield's going to come back, of course. If he's uh, drafted high, that's up in the air. Um, offensively, too, you know, Chase Stillman coming off a good rookie year uh, for the Sudbury Wolves. Uh, you know, Landon McCown for the first pick. He looks like he was starting to come around near the end there. Uh, he's another good player. Uh, they got a good core and they had a good draft this year, drafting Goyette, uh, Delich, and uh, yeah, so the, those two for sure. But you know what? Rob Papineau, the GM of the Sudbury Wolves and the uh, and staff, not just him, but staff as well, all of them did a great job with this draft. And I think the Wolves had a great draft in the future. And even this year looks pretty good. Is there a team you're worried about? In the, in, in, in the OHL, I'm worried about. See, the OHL, I, I think everybody, everybody knows this. It's a, a league that you can go two years, be good, and then all of a sudden the players move on, and then all of a sudden you go back down to, you know, kind of it could be mediocrity or it could be steady, right? Unless you're the London Knights, right? The London Knights seem to be doing well every year, and the Saginaw Spirit actually have been doing well every year. but um, a team that I'm worried about, I, I, you can't really say. It used to be the Ottawa 67s, of course, in the Eastern Conference. But um, a lot of their players are moving on now too, right? I mean, uh, Joseph Graffa is now he's gone. He's the overager. Noel Hoffenmeyer, the best defenseman, he's gone. Uh, Jack Quinn, uh, another good player that they have. Marco Rossi, both of those guys will be drafted. Marco Rossi is probably going to make the jump, and he's not coming back. Uh, that's what I uh, – I'm pretty sure he's not coming back. So. Hey, that's a lot of scoring power, right? That's gone. So um, that's one team that I'm, I used to be worried about, and I hated going into the arena because you knew they're, they, they got a good idea because they got good fans, right, and they get right into it. It was an intimidating place to play, right? And um, I don't know. I'm not really – I don't know. It's hard to say right now. You can't really say right now. The OHL is weird. You can't, 
you can't say you're you're scared about somebody because for me the real season starts in the OHL after Christmas, and that's when all the trades happen, and that's you know the teams that are going for it, right? Um, but other than that, uh, you can't say, really say you know you're scared of a team right now. So uh, everybody's kind of even, Steven. Being a broadcaster who goes on the road, who do you think has the craziest fans in the Ontario Hockey League? <laughs> There's a lot of them, <laughs> in good in a good way though, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, crazy fans like, um, wow, um, Saginaw's up there. Saginaw's definitely up there. They get into it, which is good, but they're good fans though. That's what I mean. Um, let's see, uh, Kitchener, Kitchener Rangers. They have good fans. Uh, they get into it. They pack the house every night. Sudbury Wolves. Best fans in the league, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Best fans in the league, that's for sure. Great place to go. Uh, you know, I try to get up there and got to try to get up there two, three times a year. But the fans are amazing. Like I said, uh, I like I said, best in the league, but most intimidating. Guelph has good fans. Uh, Ottawa, Ottawa is very. I just mentioned them. Um, other than that, uh, London, of course. London's a great arena to go. They always pack the place, 9,000, 10,000 people a game, right? Uh, that's probably one of the best places to go for atmosphere, if you want atmosphere there in Kitchener, that's for sure. When they pack the place, almost 10,000 people a game. In London, I think Kitchener's about 8,000, right? Something like that. But, um, yeah, that, th those would probably be it right there at the top of my head. But Sudbury's number one, that's for sure. What do you think the uh, future of the OHL is going to look like? Do you see any big changes? Do you see the different type of play happening at all? What do you think the future looks like? Um, well, if I think the future is going to stay, the future is going to look good. I mean, you got your ups and downs. Um, this year, if you talk about players, uh, this year is the best uh, for OHL players coming into the NHL draft, that's for sure. I mean, there's in the top 10, there's probably going to be about seven OHLers going, right? in the top 10 of this NHL draft. So, and the year before that, I, I believe it was, you know, it was the U S hockey development program that was stealing the show. Right. So it's, it, it kind of goes up and down, you, but uh, for the future wise, it always looks good. OHL is the best developing league in the, in, in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, it's always going to look good. Always. So to look at the NHL real quick, in your mm -hmm. mind, Mr. Mike Carafolidis, give me your ultimate NHL line. Oh, man. All right. All right. So I'll go with center. I'm going to go with Mario Lemieux. Mario Lemieux was, oh, my goodness, just dominating. Dominating, dominating player. Um, I'd probably go with Wayne Gretzky, of course. That'd be my next uh, guy. And then, you know what? I'd put Sidney Crosby in that line. Yeah, how do, you, do you, how do you like that line, huh? Wow. That's the three dynamic, uh, dynamic players in the front. Uh, if you go back to – and then you go back in goaltending, I'd probably go Patrick Waugh. I'd go Patrick Waugh in that, that's for sure. Um, on defense, I man, defense is hard. That's a hard one. There's so many of them that were so good. Um, you know what? I – I tell you, I, 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 it's it's hard. It's hard to say for defense. Defense, I'll hold off on. Okay, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's a real tough one. So, uh, if I, if it comes to me, then I'll then I'll say it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Is it very much Crosby Ovechkin or Crosby Ovechkin, or do you think Ovechkin's better? Oh, man, you you got the you got. Great questions. I'll tell you that right now. Great questions. You have a, a good future, my, my man. Yes, very good. Um, yeah, boy, oh, boy. Ovechkin or Crosby. It, I'm like, I go back and forth with those guys. If I, if I want a leader, if I want a pure leader, I'm going Sidney Crosby, 100%. Um, but if I want a guy that's going to score goals, but Ovechkin's a leader too. You know what? They're both leaders. Uh, but I'd probably probably go with Crosby just because he's won more championships. Like, he's won a gold medal. Uh, he's won World Juniors, of course. Uh, he's won Stanley Cup. Ovechkin has two as well. But uh, Crosby's won more, and I think Crosby's more of a leader, and I definitely go with Crosby. 
He's more of the overall team guy to me. If there's an NHL season, COVID could, you know, swallow this up and we wouldn't have the rest of the NHL season. But if there is, yeah. who's the, your number one favorite to win the cup? Oof. Number one favorite to win the cup. My goodness. If there is a season, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, it could be anybody. It could be the Oilers. The Oilers look good, you know. Um, I don't want to say the Leafs because I am a Leaf fan, and I don't want to say the Toronto Maple Leafs because they disappoint me all the time. Um, oh, yeah. It, it could be Columbus. You know what? I'll tell you what. Watch out for these Columbus Blue Jackets. For one reason, they had a lot of injuries, right? Mm-hmm. And now these guys are getting rested up, their team, and they're going to be ready to go. Watch out for them. Watch out for an underdog to win the Stanley Cup. So uh, I'm going to call it an underdog. I don't think it's going to be, you know, the one-two in there. Yeah, just, be, just because it's a tournament and, and, and the players have been off for so long, right? So watch out for that. That's, that's my prediction. Watch out for the underdog. Watch out for that 8C, 9C, whatever it is. So I like that. I like the underdog. So we'll see. In the four major sports of baseball, basketball, hockey, and football, what's the hardest sport to win a championship in? Hmm. Probably hockey. Hockey and Stanley Cup's the hardest championship to win, 100%. You're grinding it out seven-game series. You're playing till June. Uh, you're, you start in October. Uh, traveling, 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 traveling. Uh, that is the toughest trophy to win by far. And you got to stay in shape. You're taking your bumps and bruises. Uh, like I said, with your traveling, with your meetings, with the players and whatnot, uh, the way they do it with the coaches, um, by far that's the hardest. And anybody would probably tell you the same thing, the hardest championship. And that's the best-looking championship, the Stanley Cup, 100%. What's the easiest? Oh, easiest? Probably, I, man, well, it's not football. That's not easy. Football, man, oh, man. It's not football, that's for sure. Uh, maybe maybe baseball. I think baseball might be the easiest, right? So, uh, because what are they, they – they go five – they go seven-game series. Well, they grind – no, no, baseball, it's, they, they really go hard. Hmm. Um, I'll say tennis. Is tennis in there? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're all hard to win. Seriously. I think hockey's the hardest, but I'll say tennis is the easiest thing to win the U.S. Open. There you go. There's my, there's my uh, <laughs> uh, answer to that one. I guarantee you can't hit the ball back from Novak Djokovic, though. Yeah, I can. Uh, no, Give me a tennis racket. No, Give me a tennis racket. No problem. Give me a tennis racket. I'll, I'll, I'll zoom it right back. Hey, the harder they come, the faster they come back at you. <laughs> I love tennis, you know? I used to play tennis a lot when I was young, when I was a wee, wee little one, but I, I stopped playing. And uh, we used to have a tennis court near my mom's house. And uh, that, I don't know, they closed the town and then I stopped going. So we used to meet all the time there with uh, friends from middle school. And we used to all pretend we were people and stuff and pretend to serve in volley and whatever. You know, we weren't very good at it, but uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. But tennis is a great sport. And I can hit it back, I tell you. Look out. I'll go against Djokovic. I'll go against anybody. Let's, let's do it. I might lose six love, six love. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll hit one, at least one back, 150 miles an hour. <laughs> you never know. Hey, I can do it. Yeah. Where can people follow you on social media and where can people hear the Sudbury Wolves game? Sure. Uh, they can follow me at Mike. I'll spell the last name K A R A. F I L I D I S at Mike Carefolitis. Uh, the Wolves games are on CKLU 96.7 FM, uh, home and away. And the um, uh, and also you can listen to the Wolves games at mixlr.com slash Sudbury Wolves. And there's where you can listen to the games. You can hear me or Brian Cooper. So, yeah. And, uh, Looking forward to the season, man. I just can't wait. I can't wait till it uh, till it starts. The witch on. Hopefully, it starts and everybody stays safe and uh, on time at least. So, um, well, we'll see what happens. Right now, things are kind of looking up, and then they're kind of going down. But uh, I know here in Ontario, everything's looking looking pretty good, and I'm sure in Michigan, everything's looking a lot better as well. 
so which is a good thing. And uh, hopefully we keep it up and uh, we can play and everybody will be safe and the fans can come back slowly but gradually and uh, we'll have a season, right? If you were in charge, would you say half capacity fans, no fans, or let the stadium spin? I would go gradual. Okay. I would definitely go gradual with that. I would probably go start off with 30% fans and see how it goes, right? Um, and then I would go to 50. And then apparently, you know, they're supposed to come out with a, a vaccine, they're saying by January or something, something like that. Um, so until the vaccine comes on January, then you go 100%, right? And you go 100% January, February, and you play the whole season. You get ready for, uh, get ready for everything. So that's that's what I would do, definitely. Thank you, Mike, for this interview. To check out this interview and previous interviews, go to the YouTube channel, James Paxson. And as always, thank you to the guest, Mr. Mike Karafalidis. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, James. And uh, I look forward to talking to you during the year. You keep up the great work you do with the Saginaw Spirit in, their, in the studio for the Rogue Games, my friend. Thank you very much, sir. Very, very welcome.